Uh, my name is Thomas Schurz. I'm a software developer here at the University of Cincinnati. My pronouns are he and him. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for stopping by. Uh, my presentation is around improving our metadata through AI, artificial intelligence. And I um, appreciate being accepted because no official conference today exists without at least saying the term AI anymore, right? And so uh, I'm glad to have the opportunity to talk a little bit about AI and how we're gonna try to use it here at the University of for University of Cincinnati. Uh, like most of you, I'm sure a lot of your directors and administrators are asking how we can do something with AI. And uh, here at Cincinnati, they've asked us in our digital repository unit to think about ways we could use AI uh, in our repository uh, development. And so being that none of us had a lot of experience working with AI, uh, we referred back to some of our old familiar friends, machine learning and natural language processing. And so by starting with machine learning, we kind of went back to the idea of what kind of problems can we solve with AI slash machine learning? And so we started to ask ourselves in our repository, um, do any of these questions apply? And so very quickly, we got to the classification options and we started to look at our metadata and say, okay, uh, what types of metadata aren't being completed by the users during ingest? And then how can we improve that to enhance discovery? And so we looked very closely at the idea of classification, but not just classification, we looked at classification using natural language processing. Uh, a lot of what gets ingested into our IR is documents that have text in them. And to enhance that, we can use natural language processing to examine the text, classify the text, uh, extract keywords, you know, and build encoding models, design models, and all of us led to an opportunity inside of Scholar to enhance our subject terms, right? That's the first thing that, uh, uh, you know, our open keyword fields, we have the ability to enhance these subject terms using natural language processing. And then also there's an opportunity that we use something called a genre or a document type. Uh, and there's an opportunity there also to look at genre and say, can machine learning, natural language processing, and eventually AI uh, determine what type or genre of document is being uploaded? And so we thought this was an interesting area. Uh, after doing a little bit of literature review, we learned that there are others out there working on similar type of things. So we decided to attack first the subject keywords, and then later on down the road, we'll start to look at the genre types. But essentially the tooling for both of these opportunities or tasks is kind of the same. Uh, before we actually talk about the specific tooling, we've now prepared ourselves as a unit to start to think about AI moving beyond just basic machine learning and natural language processing. And so there are a couple important terms that we had to, to get familiar with so that once we have the tooling in place, we not only uh, have the tooling, but we have all the other components necessary. And so AI, or in this case, natural language processing AI requires that you have a corpus, right? That you have this body of work that you want to, to enhance. And then to do that, you have to come up with an algorithm or a simple tool that looks at the corpus and makes, uh, enables and makes decisions. Uh, to do that though, you need to ha have a training set, uh, a group of items that you would like to use to train your, your algorithm um, to provide uh, the knowledge for what you'll see later is called a vocabulary or um, a training set. 
Uh, you also need a collection of documents that you would consider your test set because a lot of the AI process is trial and error testing feedback loop. And so now that we as a unit became comfortable with the idea of AI and some of the components that we were gonna need to take on this project, we started to look at you know, what makes AI different. And I, I think as someone once said, you know, AI has to replace a human function, right? Uh, it has to be seen as a decision maker. And so there is what I call the AI process, you know, that involves identifying something, codifying that something, uh, running it through a model, predicting the outcome, and then most importantly, uh, the feedback that, that comes with predicting and, and running something through the model. I think that feedback loop's important to to the idea of AI. Uh, also the idea of prediction. You know, were these predictions useful? Do they make sense? Uh, were they original? You know, those kind of things. So once we prepared that, we started to do a literature review and we found an engine uh, out of the National Library of Finland uh, it's called Anif. Anif is built on Python and poetry. Uh, Anif has three great interfaces. You have a command line interface, it has an API, uh, a RESTful API, and it also has a GUI. And so how a NEAF works is you build a project and that project is composed of as what we would call uh, three AI components or machine learning NLP components. Uh, the first component is a vocabulary. You have to go out in the world and say, okay, what are my subject terms that I would consider uh, for uh, acceptable for the subject field. And so these subject terms will be used uh, as, as your recommendations or your enhancements to your metadata. Think of them as thesauruses, list of subject headings. They come in various formats, TSVs, tab separated values, CSV, comma separated. And then one of our old favorites, uh, N triples, RDF, turtles, the, a lot of it come in the format, uh, any of those formats. And so essentially what a subject vocabulary is, is, is it's a bunch of uh, terms and then URIs that reference that term somewhere. And so some of the more popular ones in the Anif project, of course, out of Finland, is you get a lot of uh, Finland Finnish subject vocabularies. There's also been a lot of, and these are things we learned in the process. We're, we're going through this process. We're trying to learn what kind of vocabulary will be good for an institutional self-deposit repository. Um, so then we went and continued our literature review and found, you know, of course, Library of Congress is in the business of providing uh, subject vocabularies. Uh, there's a lot of good work being done at the University of Penn in terms of not only creating these Library of Congress subject uh, vocabularies, but also providing training data for your Library of Congress subject headings. Uh, there's also, we found UNESCO has a pretty good thesaurus. So the first step is establishing your subject vocabulary. What subject terms are acceptable to be used as enhancements to your metadata? Once you have a subject vocabulary, the next thing that an EF requires is a bit of uh, pre-processing. They call this an analyzer. This is where you'll get into lemmization, tokenization, uh, normalizing your text terms. You know, as you pull text out of a full text document, uh, the analyzer, you know, creates derivatives and like I said, lem lem lemmatization and tokenization. And here are a couple of the analyzers that Anif supports. Uh, as you see, they're all kind of interesting, right? You know, some of them just split text into words and then turn them all into lowercase. That's the simplest analyzers. Others like the snowball will do some stemming. Uh, then even more, some of the Voica analyzers will also do lemmatization or the spacey analyzers will do lemmatization. And that's the idea of, you know, we used to con congregate verbs in, 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 in foreign language classes and English classes. And so that's the idea of uh, taking all the derivatives of a word and considering them 
when you're doing your analysis of the full text. And then the third component of an ANEF project after the subject vocabulary and the analyzers is the back end. And these are uh, different models uh, that can be used to determine what kind of subject terms and how the relevancy ranking happens. It's all a percentage game, right? And so the most popular one is the TFIDF model or back end. And that's uh, basically uh, a term counter, right? You know, just the frequency of different terms determines their, their relevancy percentage. Um, some of the other one, uh, neat ones, they start to, to group words together and start to think a little bit about grouping of words and, and to determine their relevancy, fast text, amikuji, you know, these are things based off of different algorithms, but the idea of grouping terms um, and then uh, some probability models, of course, are always important. And so there's a whole list of backends that you have to kind of explore. And that's why it's important to have a good set of test data, right? So that you can see the different result sets, see which ones are more related to your problem and see how they, uh, they, they work to give you the results that you're looking for. Um, so here at UC, we've, we've moved forward and we're, we're comfortable with ANEF. We've explored its options, but then we, we come to this training set question, right? You know, and the idea is, as we know, with a lot of the AI conversations going on around us, you know, the idea of the training set is the back end to, to the AI experience. Uh, it's very important that you think about your needs and, and, and what, what is your vocabulary and make sure that you have a training set that matches your vocabulary. The good thing is a lot of the people, the community around ANEF have developed training sets for the, a lot of the vocabularies I mentioned earlier. Uh, here at UC, we still struggle with the idea of maybe creating our own training set, you know, taking on this responsibility internally, you know, and thinking about, you know, copyright and ownership in terms of, uh, who owns the training data and should we use our own training data? Um, what are our options for external training data? Um, uh, I think some of you are familiar with ChatGPT. You know, they're struggling with this idea. I know recently Reddit turned off their API access to ChatGPT uh, to kind of reel in ownership of their content. So, so copyright ownership, all of these use agreements, all of these are still things we're struggling with, um, but we're gonna move forward and, and make decisions. Uh, also size, you know, loading of training sets takes time. You know, how big of a training set do you need? Um, and, and then how much of, of your resources can be, can be used to, to load and train these various things. So those are just some of the considerations. Uh, you also see here what a, training set kind of looks like. Again, uh, you have URIs that reference different uh, subject terms or items. All right, and so then lastly is the question of integrating all of this into Scholar. So as I said before, Anif does a great job of providing command line interface or API interfaces. And we already have a lot of tooling for pulling out full text uh, out of documents that are ingested. And so now we're gonna work on creating a, a service to use that full text that's uh, extracted through Hydra derivatives and kind of post it to a Nice API, get some results back. And then either A, uh, we've thought about creating a mailer that will, will send the depositor some recommendations or enhancements. We, we are uncomfortable with changing the works themselves, but we like the idea of sending the depositor uh, a mail uh, stating that, you know, we, that we've discovered some useful subject terms. And if they would like us to enhance the metadata, click here kind of thing. Uh, we're also gonna have a rake task, of course, that we can use anytime we wanna run different items through 
our what I call our subject term and answer or Dewey. Uh, and then lastly is the question of, is this something that would be useful to gemify? Um, and that's where I would talk to the community and see if there would be some interest in something like this. And so that's our experience here at UC. You know, we've uh, been tasked to integrate some, some AI into our repositories. And we're gonna use the ANIF model or machine uh, from the Natural Library of Finland. And we're learning a lot along the way in terms of training vocabularies, how do these inter integrations work? And so we are at the point where once we determine some of our training concerns, we'll start to begin to put code to paper and start to connect up a, a new service that will run ingested full text through an EVE and then send the user an email. So thank you. Uh, I appreciate everyone listening. And if you have any questions or if anybody else has been tasked with AI uh, experiences or responsibilities, let us know what you're starting to develop. Thank you so much, Thomas. It's always great to um, hear, uh, hear from you and hear this, this cool use case for using AI at your institution. Um, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to use the Q&A in Zoom. Uh, we have a couple of minutes before our scheduled break. Um, and while you're typing in those questions, I might also um, point folks, if you're not already looking at it, to the Connect channel where there is uh, quite a bit of discussion about other projects that have used or are exploring using um, AI and metadata um, at some other institutions, as well as a discussion and link to a presentation um, about uh, ethics uh, within um, using AI and um, assigning subject headings. That's fantastic. Again, that's the exciting part about this, getting that conversation going and uh, starting to, as a community, start to see where people are going with this new technology. As always, I'm always on Slack. Feel free to ask me questions about how our process is going and we'll share the results when things are closer to completion.